see who's on the road to the dome. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Road to the Dome, our nightly look at what's doing in the NCAA, NIT, and IHSAA tournaments. Letter perfect, as always. That describes IU's effort in the Sweet 16 tonight as well as they did what they had to do to tear down Louisville's House of Cards. Let's get right to the Gateway City. Ed Sorensen is alive in St. Louis with the story of IU's big win. Take it away, big fella. Thanks, Kenny. About to get blown over out here in front of St. Louis Arena by a stiff 16. Ed Sorensen live at St. Louis Arena. By the New Star Six. Now back to Ken Tomesh on Road to the Dome with more on the remainder of the evening's action in the NCAA tournament. All right, Ed, thanks. Get some sleep. We'll see you tomorrow night at 5, 6, 10, and 11 in uh, all our shows. All right, Florida State. Let's take a look at some highlights from the Southeast region. The Seminoles finally playing in a regional that does not include the Hoosiers for the first time in a while. Earned a trip to the Final Eight with a win over a gritty Western Kentucky squad. Sam Cassell tried to win it at the end of regulation. No, 69 all. They went to overtime. And that's when FSU's Bob Sura stepped up and nailed the three. God, this, this is easy. Isn't it 74-70 Seminoles? Western had a last shot, though, down 81-78 seconds to play. Syphius Button for three. If this one bounces in, they're still alive? No. The Hilltoppers bottom out 81-78. The final Florida State moves on to take on either Kentucky or if Wake Forest can make an unprecedented comeback uh, than the Demon Deacons at 60-26 to the half. Winners play Saturday at 3.38 in the NIT. Georgetown over Miami of Ohio. The Hoyas join, join Providence, Minnesota, and Alabama, Birmingham in the NIT Final Four in New York City. And in the women's NIT, Butler falls to Florida International 79-75 in overtime. The Lady Bulldogs are 22-7. and They'll play in the consolation round tomorrow night. That'll do it for Road to the Dome. We'll check on the Pacers coming up, though, after a break and a look at the Ben Davis High pep rally today. They are ready to send the Giants off in style to the Hoosier Dome where they'll play Carmel in the first semifinal on Saturday morning. But here is the scary part. BD football coach Dick Dullahan from something from the spring collection. Ah! Don't let this scare you off, though. I'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everybody. The Pacers went looking to raise their fortunes back to 500 tonight in Seattle. A win would put them at 33 and 33 with two games to play out on their western road swing. And at the half, what do you know? Pacers lead at 57 53 over Seattle. They started the game with a 10 to 2 run. Dominique Wilkins had 38 as Atlanta beat Houston by 10. It was Denver by 11 over Golden State. And New York leads Utah in the fourth. That Denver game, now a final, 99 to 88. Well, the NFL is becoming the land of the free and the home of the really, really big bucks. Pierce Holt left the Niners for a three-year, $7.5 million deal with the Falcons today. And giant quarterback Jeff Hostetler is now a Raider for three years and $8 million bucks. Reggie White says if it was up to him, he'd choose to play for the 49ers, but that it's not up to him. He says God will decide where he plays. And you know, the free agency boom came 10 years too late for some guys, guys like Joe Theismann. I mean, number seven was all pro, back-to-back -back Super Bowls with the Redskins. He could make easily four or five million bucks a year today. Now, while Joe was in town today to speak at a fundraising luncheon for Crossroads Rehab Center, I had a chance to ask number seven about the rising price of quarterbacks. What does he think about all this stuff? It doesn't necessarily have to do with how good you are. It has to do with your need to the football team and whether or not there's anybody out there that they think can comparably do the job that you can. We are truly in a situation now where it is supply and demand. There is not a great supply and there is a tremendous demand for good quarterbacks. And of course, you can't talk about Joe Theismann without showing this. Now, I think, just stop it right there. Yeah, in case Joe's watching, I don't think he needs to see that again, and neither do we. Theismann says there's a little part of him that still wants to get out there and play, that is, until he sees guys like Steve Entman. Can't blame him. That's it. Uh, join us tomorrow night for more live coverage from St. Louis. For now, let's go back to Dumont.